It's like they're trying to be too meta. You're gonna make them an offer they can't refuse. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can yeah. buy you a drink. You can. But, uh, well, said, well, I mean, he did pick up somebody we know. When you sidestep the question, that you technology does not exist. Hey guys, you're listening to A to Z. Our guest this episode is aquatic biologist Allison Tarter. We talked about her thesis work on freshwater mussels and their connection to the health of the Village Creek. Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Aaron. I'm here with my co-host, Zach. Welcome to A to Z Podcast. If this is your first time listening, thanks for checking us out. A to Z is produced sort of weekly and show notes can be found at a to Z podcast.com. If you like what you hear, feel free to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast fix. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at A2ZBMT. Aaron, man. Okay, so yeah. we're 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 kind of doing scripts and looking at some reads and talking about what we, how we're going to intro this episode with with Allison, and it's really. I was always hesitant to say that. I know that I would like to leave this town and this area, but talking to Sarah, talking to uh, we have one coming out or might be out with Tej, that it really kind of illuminated some of the things that I like about this area and, and, and the big thicket and everything that we talked about in this one is, is one of those. It's a big part. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I kind of go off on a tangent a couple times about how special I feel that the big, the, the big thicket and village Creek is to me and how it's kind of overlooked if you're from here. So hopefully mm. we kind of will stir some passion inside of you for maybe your childhood memories or, or maybe if, you'll find out something you didn't yeah, know. Exactly. If you didn't grow up here, then you might, you know, find your way to go to, to, to one of these places right? and see the majesty for yourself. And there's, there's, there's also like, we touch on subjects of climate change as well. And, and actually projects that are, that are uh, uh, happening now are about to happen. Yeah. That will, yeah, that, will serious, that will change, seriously but, affect our environment. Uh, right. 10, man-made, 10 20 years man-made down interference, uh, dredging uh, canals and things like that. Logistical so it's, things. It's, it's also, while we don't get political so much, it is, it is a, a politically important episode to listen to. I feel. Yeah, I think that's that's I mean that's about it. But you know, Allison's a, an aquatic biologist, so she is an expert, legitimately an expert. She's working on her thesis right now, so uh, hopefully you like what what you hear and 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 maybe you learn a little something or two. Yeah, feel free to subscribe, leave reviews. Yeah, and leave leave some comments. You guys, let us know. We're really trying to get you guys to interact with us, and I know that that this is not an easy thing to do because you have to go away from wherever you're looking, go listen to the podcast, and then come back and comment. But we're trying to make this uh, a great show for you guys, for the listeners. So comment and tell us what you think. Yeah, we want to hear your feedback and enjoy this episode with Allison Tarter. Chemical reactions are fun. I like experimenting. (laughs) Anyway, uh, Allison Tarter, nice to have you back. Hi, good to see you. Did I say your name right? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. I messed up on another another person's. They made fun of me. So I just no. That's that was correct. Uh, it's good to have you back. You actually you came on whenever we did Sarah's. You came and met us, and it was funny. We were looking back through show notes, and we had a buddy of our, Chris Presley. It's an episode. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna have it out yet, but uh, we were talking to him about potential guests, and he mentioned your name too. We wrote it down and your phone number. Oh, really? And then like a couple of weeks later, we had Sarah on. And here, here you were, and we didn't make the connection until like a couple of weeks after that too. Right. So it was like a weird coincidence or kind of thing that happened but uh, glad we could finally get you back i know we tried yeah. to get you back around the ice storm yeah ice storm and then the flu and then yeah <laughs> then, i think we all got that that was horrible yeah but it's hey thanks for coming um yeah you want to tell a little bit about yourself what you do sure um i'm an aquatic biologist and currently i'm a graduate research assistant at texas state university and i'm studying freshwater unioid mussels in the big thicket eco region interesting thing about that is there are there's a higher biodiversity of freshwater mussels in kind of east texas the big thicket region than anywhere else in the state and the state of texas is pretty high on the list of biodiversity yeah oh yeah so freshwater mussels are probably the most imperiled group of organisms in the country right now why is that because they're so susceptible to an environmental anthropogenic change. So anything that we do affects them, right. uh, not just water chemistry, but impoundment, any kind of change. They're, they're really, they what are, is impoundment? Impoundment's like a, like Toledo Bend making a dam. Oh, okay. So like changing the flow of. Right, changing the flow pattern. They're probably affected pattern. by the flow of the water too, huh? Water chemistry, flow pattern. It's kind of like salinity. Right. right, salinity. 
especially now, and that's a huge problem we have now coming up. I mean, we've had saltwater intrusion just from the storms, mm -hmm. but not so much in this one, but in Ike, we had a lot of saltwater intrusion and they're talking about deepening and widening the ship channel here, which again will allow more saltwater intrusion to places that didn't used to have it and change the environment again because a lot of them can't tolerate a high salinity level. Right. Yeah, those those uh, those sort of things are, are overlooked a lot of times when people think about the environment and our impact. Most people think of throwing out your trash bags or right. a cigarette butt or a popsicle stick or dumping oil in the ditch or yeah, something like yeah, something like that's, that. That's but yeah. more common than you can even imagine. Yeah, but there's a lot I'm more sure. things going on, right? So right. you're talking about these uh, bigger things, you know, right. like uh, like infrastructure, infrastructure. Pro projects yeah. and different things like that, yeah. Right. I mean, the most common pollutant in an aquatic system is just sediment, uh, debris, uh, like fine kind of clay-sized particles. Mm. Isn't that why the area that we live in, the part of the coast we live in, is just seems so brown and yes. dead is from the sediment zone of the Mississippi, right? Right. Yeah. You have the delta coming out that, well, especially since it's been channelized and isn't allowed to flow like it used to. I mean, it used to meander, so the mouth would be here, then it would go over here, and everything now is just kind of going straight out into oh, the Oh, you would gulf. have like little oh, pockets right. of deposits of... Kind of like we made a slip and slide right into the into the gulf. So it kind of, yeah. Yeah, so, so after a while, you know, rivers have a, a natural pattern. They have bends, meanders. Uh, so as, as the current comes down, it's going to erode this section. Mm -hmm. And when it erodes the this part, it has to... Uh, uh, it's going to be hard like to deposit the, on the other, yeah, the, the exactly. low energy side. Yeah, water always so, takes the path of least resistance. You kind of right. Bank, yeah. So it'll build up, and then the river actually could change course 10 miles. It could cut off a bend, and then there's a lower point over here. So you're constantly kind of having your, your, your delta built back up. Right. And that's actually what created some of our barrier islands was. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. over time. Yeah, from the Mississippi even. You can feel that when you're, when you're walking out on the beach. You can feel... Where you're going down and it comes back up, and you're going down and it comes back up, or but yeah, that's it's caused yeah. a lot of problems with you know we we keep having coastal washout, but we're not having any redeposition of sediment because it's going further out into the Gulf because it's going at a higher rate of speed, more energy. So right, it's so it's not, just floating all off right. instead of actually building. Right. Like yeah. It. So mm. would a delta normally just build farther out? It would just it would grow instead of a road. Just kind of go back and forth. I think yeah. a lot a lot of like side to side, back and forth really? action is. is but it's that the constant typical. changing up that makes it so fertile and right, and like such a good, I guess, like a thriving ecology. Right, would you say yeah, yeah. But, but things like the international shipping channel, I guess, would uh, divert it or just change it slightly. Right. Yeah. Well, w when you deepen anything, so you think about. Um, like Hurricane Ike with the storm surge that came through, a lot of a lot of the changes come with storms with natural disasters. So, you have a deeper, wider access point for water to come up from the Gulf into here. So when you have all the wind blowing up, it, it's easier for that. The water can go faster, further up, and cause more damage that way. Oh, hmm. that's right. Well, we're still seeing effects from that with the right. newer storms too, right? Probably the flooding had a lot to do with some of the because we have a lot of do we have like a lot of dam projects and stuff around here more than normal? Uh, where Toledo. people are changing because we have all these those these port waters, right? Like, yeah, we got like barriers. We have a saltwater barrier right there. We have different yeah. things like uh, that. The saltwater barrier it was actually made, from my understanding, to kind of negate the fact that they're going to deepen and widen the ship channel. <laughs> To keep the salt. To kind of negate the effects you were just salt, talking about. The, yeah, from, yeah. Because the city the city of Beaumont's drinking water comes from the other side of the saltwater barrier, as mm, does all right, the water right, for right. the refineries. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that it, makes sense. Yeah. I'm glad they put it on the other side. It, and it kind of works, so, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, well, but so all that all that aside, the Mississippi River, all that other stuff, your, your, your current specialty right now is the Village Creek, right? Right. That's what you're studying heavily. And that's kind of the biome you're working in. Right. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's, I mean, because it's got a special place in my heart because yeah, me and Zach, we grew up in there. For, yeah. You know, well, it's a great lives. place. Yeah, we grew up in Silsby. And then that's so, where my parents want their ashes spread whenever they die. Is it really? On a canoe trip in the creek. Yeah. That's actually pretty. That's, that's really sweet. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they, yeah. they love that. They love the creek. They go canoeing often. Well, it is. It's such a, it's such a special place. And it has wider sands than the beaches. Yeah. And and the way that we're just kind of used to it or accustomed to it, I, I should say, 
makes it really easy to forget how special it is. So people right. around here, they take it for granted, but it's such a weird environment. It's such a diverse biome too. The the sandy lands are so strange because the sandy lands make it this like sort of arid place where it's a mixture of desert like things like prickly pear cactuses mm-hmm. and right. and then also right. like swampy bogs and, and, and plants and palmettos and right. stuff like that. And sundews, carnivorous yeah. plants. Yeah. In sun, in sundews, sundews are like pretty this is like a high concentration of them around here, mm-hmm. right? Oh, in the trail. in the thicket, yeah. There's a yeah, few a few spots, and then Watson's Plant Reserve, I believe, is another spot that has a lot of sundew. Ooh, where's where's Watson's Plant Reserve? Oh, um, because <laughs> we so my dad my dad's by the Larson Reserve by Larson. Okay, that's where he's from, and and I've seen the 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 honeydew <laughs> ones or, or right. you know those and yeah, the sundews. I've, the sundews, and I've seen the uh, the the fly traps. Well, he had sundews right. out by my house. My dad didn't mm-hmm. believe me. Oh, he was cool. like, no, they're only out in the big And thicket. there's pitcher plants, like, no, they're too. They're right there there's in the ditch. There's pitcher plants. Yeah. So there's like a lot of coniferous plants that, yeah. that yeah. you don't really like. It's very. It's nowhere else has that stuff <laughs> unless you yeah. want to go to a rainforest. And then just the nature of it is so interesting. It's so much different than, say, like the Natchez River that's right over here, mm-hmm. right? Or the Trinity River. Or And it's it's one of the very few, like, free-flowing like spring fed, like stands on its own uh, creeks in the state of Texas. Most creeks in the state of Texas are tributaries that run off of another river, right? Yes, and, and it is to a degree. You've been it is doing a your It's kind of special. It, right? been it's doing a homework. It's like second or third order stream. So um, yeah, yeah. Well, you would know. I'm not. I'm not the it's, expert, but and there are some. I think there there is some diversion to it. Well, it's kind of confusing. Yeah, it, yeah. So it's it's where a Big Sandy Creek and Village Creek come together. There's Big Sandy Creek that come together, and there's like Wildwood, and I know Wildwood has an impoundment. They have yeah. a dam in in there, so it is some. And there's got to be like reflowing. twenty other creeks that flow off of Village Creek. There are right. Yeah. Is there is yeah. there anything specific that brought you? That are you from here originally? I am. Yeah. And you you have you did you choose the mussels in Village Creek specifically because of something you like about it or was you were were you assigned or no i I chose it i actually wrote my own grant and everything for the for the project for the Uh, muscles mm -hmm. and you've been working on this for how long Longer than it should, longer than it should no, be good due to weather. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, the weather. There's yeah. been too- <laughs> I don't think it's longer than because environments change and that's exactly what you're studying. The, so, right. and to get any sort of, I mean, that's like a that's yeah. decades long, right? Uh, yeah, this it was supposed to be about a year long study. Yeah. And it's going to be about two. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but, that's not bad. but there was that that's major good. natural disaster in the uh-huh. middle of it yeah. over there, and, and then a like freeze. Does the freeze have anything to do? Yes, with it? Yeah, yeah, the freeze. I can't do anything. The water temperature has to be warmer than fifty degrees Fahrenheit to manipulate them. Otherwise, they can't reburrow themselves, and they have a high mortality rate. And oh, so you can't even you can't pull them out to study them. I can't do any cold. any research basically right now at so all. So you're on so. standstill, huh? Yeah, interesting. And then so, I was on standstill most of last year because we had so much rain even before the hurricane came through. And you couldn't get to the sand, right? Right, I yeah. couldn't get to where I needed to get. And then right. again, you have to. They have to be able to reburrow if you manipulate if the them. And if the current's too here. high. Yeah. Wow. Increases and there six of them are state threatened species and that's the whole point of my research. Wait, so, so. if if you harm a state threatened species of mussel, is that the same as like harming endangered species? Kind of. Well, they are the reason they're not endangered species is there's not enough data on them to be federally listed. That's uh-huh. part of the reason I'm doing this project too, so you get more life history data on their. So um, you're kind of pioneering this study. Huh? Kind of on this one That's for cool. for that there there have been some surveys for them but they haven't really been um, something that could be s- said to be statistically sound it's more just kind of presence absence not not actual population studies so right. and the other thing I'm doing there's a genetic component too so I'm taking DNA samples but they're not it's not fata- it, 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 there's no fatalities uh, swabbing them basically opening right, them right. up swabbing them. Sending the DNA off for uh, research because there are two that may or may not be the same species. Really? So, yeah, they're mussels have the craziest names. So these two, one is called the Texas pig toe. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound Latin. Pig toe. No, that's not the Latin name. <laughs> the common names are Texas hilarious. And the other one, Latin. the other yeah. one is the um, triangle pig toe. So um, pig toe. Does it look like a pig toe? It kind of does look like a pig toe. Well, it looks like yeah. If you put two next to each other, kind (laughs) of get the idea of pig pig toe. toe. I like that. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Well, they they are. They're like uh, kind of a a bendy tear shapey kind of of thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. They do look like they look like pig prints. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Yeah, yeah that's, there's a cute Texas pig toe. I'll tell you what, that's <laughs> the Texas pig toe. Are really young as y'all best put them pig toes <laughs> down? All right, they're 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 Texas endangered. Okay, y'all them them endangered pig toes over there. You <laughs> yeah, put that back. that's hogzilla. Would you, oh, man, would you we're hate me a collection if, of redneck voices? Would, would you hate me if I told you that I used to eat them when I was a kid? No, I, I was just about to no. ask this because no. that's that's okay. So what you're doing is you're studying you're studying these <laughs> animals. Yes. And and how they've been affected by their environment over time, right? right? And I and I'm I'm a layman. And I'm not I'm not any sort of researcher like you, but I I can tell too, because when I was a kid and I used to go swimming, in Village Creek, it was a very different place than when I go swimming now as an adult. There was uh, these major lily pad like colonies that would pop up everywhere, and in these lily pad colonies, that's where I would get my clams. I would go okay. in there. I would I would wade in inside and kind of like sense. make yeah. sure that I would be on the lookout for water moccasins because they like to yes. hang out there. That's what I spend a lot of you my know. time looking for alligators yeah. and water moccasins. And there'd be alligators, but alligators are super chill. They're, they're yeah. nice. They don't care. But the the snakes will bite you, but the alligators won't. Yeah, and, yeah. I don't like and, water moccasins. And you, no, we'd, no, no. I'd go wade out there, and and now it's kind of scary to me. I'm a little bit more uh, cautious and apprehensive than I was when I was a kid. You mm-hmm. know, when I was a kid, I'd just go on those lily pads, and I would just dig around in the sand with my toes and feel yeah. them and you'd, you'd feel that hard bump. That, and I'd, that's scientific research. I'd, I'd that's how I do it. Is that how you do it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah literally. <laughs> that's literally what I do. <laughs> Look at, I, hey, man, I'm a researcher, man. Tell you what. But I'd uh, pick them awesome. up and if they were if they were of uh, mature size, yep. I would put them in, I'd do my shirt like this and yeah. get it up like a basket. Yeah, that's, that's and I'd pretty fill much it with clams. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd bring it, we'd, we'd barbecue it and I'd put them on there and they'd open up and I'd I'd hit them with some text joy and then I'd eat them. Yeah. It was, it was great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But but now as an adult, I've tried to do it. And first of all, the lily pads are all gone. Right. I don't really see any of those at all. Yeah. And uh, Well, if there were lily pads, that would have made it, it was kind of a flow refuge, which is a good habitat to find mussels. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, but yeah. those are all gone. And but then the flow patterns changed or something. Yeah. And then I hardly, could be, I, could I never be. find any clams anymore. All I find are like a uh, uh, half shell. I just find debris. Of, yeah. of not cl- I keep saying clams, mussels. That's, mussels, what, I, that's yeah. what I learned when I was a kid was clams. Sorry. He brought yeah. that up uh, months back. Whenever we first started doing this, he, he started talking. He said he wanted to talk to somebody about the mussels. Mm-hmm. And and I never really thought about it, but I remember them as a kid. And I don't, don't remember you remember them that? Yeah. Well, that's what well, he told me. And, yeah. and, I, and it just, it like the image popped into my head of seeing them all the time. And You probably same. just didn't eat them, though. No, I never See, ate them. Because I, I grew up half, in a half a black family, so we ate them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up in a. Half Cajun family, we ate everything. So you ate them, yeah, 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 yeah. same we, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we ate a lot of alligator my, my gar, which is another right? thing He's I've done a lot of research on alligator gar. Really? Yeah. But, uh, oh my god, I want to know about alligator gar. I, I too. love them. What a prehistoric <laughs> beast! Yeah, they are. Amazing, aren't they? 150 million years Seriously? haven't changed. They haven't changed. It's yeah. like a shark or something. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's not as old as that, but yeah, no. Yeah, they were swimming alongside of dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. But they're, I mean, they're Texas and Louisiana are the only two states where they're not imperiled. They've been extirpated really? from most of their range, again, due to altering flow patterns. They have a very specific reproductive habit. And a lot of large-bodied aquatic organisms do. I mean, you have to think of for these millions, 150 million years, they've evolved alongside of their ecosystems. So their spawning cues are driven by daylight <clears throat> photo period, light period, and water temperature and flow, actual like speed of the flow so they, they've evolved their eggs have evolved to hang on at this current rate and if it goes up then they don't hang on as well and then they have well it's it, actually with them it's more about inundation so it's more about flooding like we have seasonal flooding right and that's that's how they know what time of year it is right so that's how they reproduce. And the, the temperature yeah. so it that's their perception their of time <laughs> they're cute yeah yeah, okay. yeah. and the, and now uh they've become a huge game species people yeah, come both, from both all over europe everywhere to come over here and shoot them with a bow and arrow yeah people love bow fishing for those things so, and then they don't eat them no they don't yeah, yeah. and and it's you and can't f- eat them right rod and reel f- uh, oh yeah the vietnamese people in port Arthur love eating them yeah. oh i grew up eating them we, yeah, yeah. we used to <laughs> this is terrible <laughs> we used to gill net them in the creek oh yeah behind the and then my great aunt would haul them out and cook them what's gill net uh a net that had well, it, it was depends just big on the, where they could barely get through it. And they get they get up. they get stuck when the gills. Oh yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah it's highly illegal. But yeah. Yeah. well, you well, mean, was, whatever you're eating yeah, them. What is I feel that? we were eating them. Yeah, I, I I can never. It's it's hard for Statue me to. Limitations, right? Yeah, it's hard for me to like be mad at somebody for 
killing anything as long as they eat as it. As long as they eat it, yeah. You know what I mean? It really yeah. is, yeah. No, no. That's I, just or what if it's yeah. a pest? Well, that was another thing Nuisances. with the gar. They they yeah. called them nuisance animals for years. They actually dynamited them the state they did. call them they call yeah. them nuisance because they look scary and there was a lot of misinformation about them right there oh, was, they, yeah they look there was crazy, like man. there was like <laughs> one that bit, <laughs> they're so yeah. awesome and they're swimming right next to you in but the there, there was they one that care. like bit a little girl's <laughs> foot like 80 years ago well, they never proved yeah. that they never proved it but yeah but that's it my could have happened. that's my air quotes is it that could have happened that yeah. this little girl had like an abrasion and puncture sort of thing that was consistent with the guard's mouth so mm. Then they were like, oh, wow, this thing will They're actually bite you. And yeah. then yeah. ever since then, it's just been well, like. Well, that happens with everything. everything. Oh, anything that has yeah. a mouth. But they're, they're skittish. They're yeah. super skittish yeah, uh, fish and animals. And they're not even a. I mean, they are predatory fish, but they prey on very small fish. What's the. Uh, well, what's they're, the they're sit and wait predators. They are sit and wait predators. They're ambush. Like mm-hmm. there's a there's an aquarium yeah. or there's a there's a zoo somewhere I think in Lufkin that has a has a village creek or a nat- it has a it has I think it has a village creek or a big thicket. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh really? Tank. Oh, okay. You know what uh, I know what you're talking. About. Yeah, it, I think it's either naturist or it's it's I'm pretty sure they do have a village creek one there. They did it one time. Well, it it is a and, significant. Uh-huh. Uh, I see. And that's in an well, aquarium. I went I I went whenever I was younger. Yeah, it's an aquarium. Is it at the is that at an aquarium? Americas in in New no, Orleans. No, 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 no. Is it at the fish Texas. hatchery? That one's great. They, well, I love that. I don't know. I haven't no, been since yeah, Katrina, yeah, but they used to have paddlefish there. Oh, do they really? They, they did before Katrina, anyway. They, they, <laughs> it was the first time that I'd seen what was in the water, and we'd always been going to the creek. I was mm-hmm. probably like eight or nine. Yeah. And and the first time you see like how big those gar are, and I you think know they had some at like Gator right Country right for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some alligator. Gar. I'm gonna try to get. I'm gonna try to get the. I'm gonna try to get the owner of of Gator Country, Gator Country. on here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that would be good. Or uh, or herpetologist or or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, that's- Gator Country Spa. I've yeah, never, I've, I've never, never been, been, but I've met them a bunch of times. Yeah. different, different. I've seen them around a lot. Yeah, I've never been though. Super He's, nice people. Yeah, they are, and and they're doing really good work too. Well, they yes, care, they, they care for the animals too. Right? Yeah, like yeah. they really, they really like. They them. care they're for an animal just... that nobody else cares for. Right. right, and they do a lot of education and outreach. Right. Well, they're trying to say they're trying to keep them from getting killed on right. highways. Like, it's, yeah. it's like almost the opposite of of. Like you know, Sea World or something. Like that. Exactly. I wouldn't say a zoo. Some zoos are. are there's hey, a lot that, of good zoos. Hey, y'all, now that alligator. Hey, now that alligator <laughs> come up in the neighborhood and we worried about it. Uh, y'all call that gator country. Come get that thing out. Man. So last year, um, I guess it was in the spring. I, I was I took out some people from National Geographic. Uh, they were doing. They're actually doing a series on Texas wildlife, and awesome. it should be on air next year. But Netflix I brought them too. out and I took them out on on my boat. My little. I have a little. Fishing boat, like a John boat. Yeah, or it's a Carolina skiff. Oh, okay. So it's not really any bigger than a John boat. I got gotcha. you. It's just fiberglass and not aluminum. Um, so I took him out in, in the Martian, well, not in the Martian Bridge City, like right off the bio. There was this one cut that was pretty much guaranteed to see alligators in, and that's what they were really interested. They wanted to get some good alligator footage in their natural habitat. So I went out the week before, checked it out. I was like, yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good. There's alligators everywhere. When they came down, <laughs> it was horrible. So I'm cruising through, I'm like, was it was it like cold? Or so something no, or somebody or, went no. through and shot a bunch of alligators. Oh my God, so like, there's a floating. floating alligator oh. dead right there. There's a floating alligator dead right there. There's a dead one on the shore. Well, I mean, we must have counted ten. What body of water was this? Uh, off Cal Bio on oh, okay. Sabine Lake. Yeah. Oh yeah. In, in, wow. in between Cal Bio and Sabine, it was like a little branch of it. So. Well, you remember that little asshole who shot those whooping cranes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, yeah. there's still people like that out no, there. No, and it's a, they're going to eat my kids. Shooting a whooping yeah. crane. Yeah, you didn't hear about those that? are endangered. No, no, yeah, there yeah. Was, there, were they whooping yeah. cranes? Someone shot a. It whooping was something. Crane. It was they, yeah. there was three of them that that were that were settling in. It's they but they had been over the couple of years that they were released. They've been settling yeah. in here and like they've been like they've been fostering them to breed, you know, do all that, and they were doing well. And then some kid was in his in his truck, just shooting, and got an AR and, shoot. and shot and killed one of them. And then they found out who it was a buddy of mine, Jeff Thompson. Uh, he because he, he took pictures of him the week before, and then it happened, and then he went on the hunt and got that dude. Man, like he found Good. out where he was. Like he really went after him because he was like a he's a he's a duck hunter, so he's a bird watcher. Right. There was there was down to like ten whooping cranes in this whole state. I know. Now there's point. like now there's like thirty five or in 40. the like fifties and sixties. Yeah. 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 And yeah, it was. Yeah. So, I know yeah. that from King of the Hill. So uh, it's, yeah. it's, me too. Yeah, yeah. so it's firearm fact. Firearm yeah. like That's right. Years. <laughs> and for 10 years. and from uh, after what was the there was a book? Oh, even cowgirls get the blues. That one's about uh, Tom Robbins' book about the whipping cranes are in that. 
Hmm. Not so sure. That's that's my whipping cream knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so we both have uh, very verifiable mm-hmm. information mm-hmm. of whipping cream. Yep. <laughs> I took a boat tour down. Uh, what is that outside of Corpus? I guess where they where they have the whooping cranes. Oh, the, do you have a, a little, uh, reserve out yeah, there? Yeah, a little reserve. Yeah. That was fun. Is there yeah. another animal that, that's kind of native down here that you found fascinating? Or one of your favorites? Um, well, I do. Alligator oh, gar, I could talk about gars. all day. Yeah. So so another thing, like, I'm going to yeah. hit on some alligator yeah, sure. gar give points. Some, give me some fun facts. Um, they're, <laughs> they, grow, <laughs> they grow pretty quickly the first year of their life. They can get about a foot long. After that, their growth slows tremendously. And, uh, so it, they're just like us. Yeah, it, it, it pretty much. So a uh, female alligator gar doesn't may not be sexually uh, viable until 14 years. Wow. And by, really? Yeah. Whoa, that is like a really slow reproduction rate for a fish. Right. Yeah. And when you think about the fact that it takes that long for them to like reach sexual maturity, yeah. well, they're huge. They're, they get over 200 pounds and, right. and over eight feet in length. Yeah, the, the the catching record was in Trinity River, and it was nine and a half feet long. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, and then I think somebody yeah, this table longer, longer than this table. Longer than this table. Oh, yeah. yeah, and and bigger, Fat. just yeah. Yeah, massive, real. like a torpedo. Uh, so there's there's that, and the the fact that they will only spawn in certain conditions, so it has to be the right time of year, even under the best circumstances, without dams, without uh, channelized waterways. That's not going to happen every year. So they will only spawn over certain substrates. So they're basically flooded fields are, are where they spawn, the way their larvae are hmm. for their larvae to survive. Their larvae have a, a suctoral disc, so they actually ad- adhere to vegetation for the first I can't remember how long, but for a while they just so like they, uh, like reeds and tall grass. Right, and, you, you're yeah. not going to tell me that they they sit in egg stage for like nine months. And <laughs> no, not not quite that bad. <laughs> but what happens is so they they go into these flooded areas, and then when the uh, floodwaters recede, they're basically in a in an isolated oxbow, a backwater yeah, yeah. habitat. So there aren't as many predators to oh. harm them. So they're able to just eat and eat and eat. Because they can breathe air, atmospheric air. It doesn't matter. They have, a, they have, a, they have a primitive lung. The larvae do? Yeah. They're, no, no, all, they're, all the fishes. No, no, don't they? No. no um, alligator guard, they, like gulp, they have a... They, they come up in... There's, yeah, they, they come up in gulp air, but their what? swim bladder is, is highly vascularized, and they're, that's how they're able to come up and breathe atmospheric air. So yes. it's not technically... It's, it's, it is a very oh, so primitive... Oh, they just have a lot of veins in their swim Yeah, that's, that's what right. I mean by... I'm sure yeah. I'm putting I've always heard of terms, but but primitive <laughs> lung. Right, it, it yeah. is. It, yeah. it, wow. It's not yeah. lungs. It's like so, a so they can kind of, they can, so they, they right. go into these flood waters and they have their eggs and then they, yeah. they can subsist, uh, these flooded plains and they can subsist without their Oxygen. being fully flooded. Yeah, but yeah. It's, so they, it's, are they inside of the, the ground at that point? But it's no, like no, no, they, they, no. What, what, I'm, what I'm talking about is water that... Uh, you know, it, flowing water has a high oxygen level in it. You have stagnant water, a lot of algae. The oxygen levels tend to drop down pretty low in those, and another fish can't live in that habitat. Yeah, like a perch would just go belly up. Right. right. It would even, right. I mean, bass and, and, and sunfish can live in some pretty nasty water, but even they can't live in that. Really, you're just down to gar and bowfin, grenels. Um, they also have the primitive one. What's a, what's a, what's a bowfish? Bowfin. Bowfin. I grew up calling them grinnels, but they're uh, they're they're kind of uh, in the same clade as the alligator gar. They're more primitive type they fish. Have, are, are they a, a really bony fish with uh, large scales? And not large scales. They have a guller plate there underneath their uh, their their mouth. Is really they have crazy I, well, looking. I was, wait, 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 I, so I used to pull them up here. Yeah, pull them up. Uh, I used, I, they I used they, they almost look like you know what a snakehead fish is like the yeah whole, yeah the, they, they look a lot like that. snakehead. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's different than I was thinking of a bowfin. Bowfin. I was thinking of this fish that I used to, I've caught before when I was a kid and 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 my dad called it a buffalo fish. That's a that is a different fish. Yep. Okay, I was just making sure it wasn't yeah. that. Those get it was, really big because it was very pr- uh, primitive. Look, it was yeah. very prehistoric yeah, it does, looking. It does kind of look like a. Oh yeah, that does look like a snakehead. Yeah. So they, they do which have is more a like a flattened fish. Yeah. Everybody and, should know. But these are these are these are not these are supposed Native. to be here, and they can live in the backwater habitats too. Huh. So it's got that little precursor lung mm-hmm. ability. And they're called bowfin because they have that really long dorsal fin. They're really cool fish. I've never uh, look at see if you can pull up the picture. Of what it has a spot on its tail, like a like a drum. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a interesting. 
to distract any predators from its head. If anybody's listening, <laughs> oh, to oh, that's what that Google, is. Yeah, Google on a drum too. <laughs> skull. She's gonna describe yeah. it to you. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Which one? Like this one? Those, yeah, those. But look at their look at their jaw structure and their teeth. Oh wow, that's uh. Isn't that crazy? That's prehistoric looking. Yeah. It's a very bony fish. Very bony fish. A lot of dermal like bone. A, like a hard gill part right there. Um, I believe that's part right of there. yeah. Uh, that might wow, not be. Look at those yeah. teeth in the back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really cool when you're on, just holding on for minnows and whatever. hiking around in the woods and find you one of their skulls like laying, yeah. laying yeah. out. Yeah. You can't find skulls of like super modern fish. They just disappear. They yeah. just degrade. They're not. They're not as a. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of from the same kind of family as a as a gar would be. Same kind of like more. Same era. Ancient, Dude, is a pike the same thing as that? A pike? Is, uh, no, they're. they're I, thought, I thought they were similar. I don't know that much about pike, honestly, okay. because well, pike. pike that's more up north, right? Yeah, it's it's a northern yeah. fish. It's a lake fish, not really a stream. It seems more. It seems more modern because, uh, like with with an alligator gar, they have these very large triangular scales that are that ganoid are just, scales. Yeah, ganoid scales. And with modern fish, you don't you just don't see that. No, they and, and the bony yeah. head structure. A lot more primitive than yeah, and pike. Pike look very. It looks very more like modern. a fish. fish. Yeah, they yeah have, I've actually never held a pike. Yeah, pike has more. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> a live one. Yeah, yeah. I've caught them before. I, I've. You got to get them off your line somehow. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't so, do that. Well, so, so I'm gonna go back to like my soapbox with that. So, so the problem is, <laughs> please, you got to keep us on track. Here. <laughs> they, they only, they don't spawn every year. They only spawn in these uh, flooded fields, basically. Uh -huh. So these isolated pools, shallow yeah. water, yeah. and when they spawn, they don't give a care about anything that's going on around them. There's one large female surrounded by several small males. And they just go around and spray their eggs and sperm. <laughs> eggs and drive by eggs and sperm. For I mean, it, I don't know if you've ever seen one do that, but it's it's impressive mm -mm. because you're talking about a very large fish in a little like very shallow amount of water. Uh -huh. It's not hard to find. Oh yeah. So the project I was working so on. You, was, so yeah, I've never seen anything yeah. like that before. Oh, it's so crazy. You can, you can find them pretty. pretty yeah. Seldom. If you know when and where to look. Oh. Um, yeah. We need to take a field trip. I got to see this. But the the thing yeah. is, it, it makes them really easy to kill. So right, yeah, when you're, you're yeah. taking out the older, larger, more highly ficon, like they they the are, fourteen year old ones. Right. They have yeah. a more. <laughs> they can reproduce more eggs. So the females can only produce at fourteen, but the males can produce. I want to say it's been pretty quick. So that's why the males are always smaller. They're than, smaller. But yeah. I think maybe five five years or okay. so. Yeah. Um, and then and then and then okay. So what's uh. What do you think is the success rate of of these eggs? Like, out like how, how it has to be good if they're, if they're still how many, how many still fertilized here. eggs in these <coughs> pools do you think makes it to a fish? Makes it to a fourteen foot? No, no, not foot, not, not the age, year? but just just to a viable young fish. To a viable young fish. This is probably like fifty percent, but that's just a guess. Yeah, I mean, it has so to be like, it has to be enough to where they're still thriving. Yeah. Though, so, right? like right off the bat. You're looking at fifty percent. Well, a lot of it too has it, it has to do with the the temperature uh, of the water after that, or, and and salinity level because a, a large alligator gar can go out into the Gulf and be fine. But mm -hmm. when they're smaller like that, if you were to have like a saltwater intrusion, or oh, it was like so, like a sudden shock. rush of salt water. Yeah. Salt, it didn't, don't they call it like saltwater shock or something like that that you can get? Um, they, they don't when they're older. Maybe that's something from like having an aquarium. Anyway. But yeah, no, most fish do. Yeah. Uh, the, they're rare in the fact that the uh, the large adults can go out into the salt. I don't well, know. Yeah, they're dinosaurs. They, could, they can probably yeah, take it. Yeah. Take it. Yeah, <laughs> but even like a long nose gar can't really do that yeah. on the same level as an alligator gar. They're the yeah. osmoregulation. So. Hmm. I, I see. Uh, uh, what's 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 that? Uh, I see that off of many piers. Is just nothing but long nose guards just hanging out. Just oh, waiting. those are the needle nose guards. The needle nose that's guards, yeah. different. They're oh, okay. not. They're not. Like, oh, yeah, I was thinking. Okay, they're so I was, never mind. That's my yeah. bad. I was thinking needle yeah. nose guard and a long. Yeah, yeah they're the they're a thing. different. Um, it's a saltwater different family. species. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, those so, are really cool fish. Uh, yeah, they are. They are. And they're it's, scales. It's just part of this the strange ecology. It is of the village creek. Yeah. And All these different things together. Our position, really. I mean, when you think about how much how, how much water comes through this area and how far it comes from, we 
we have a lot of input. Like we get all the kind of the leftovers all the way down the water chain down to here. Are we pretty so. pretty unique in the world as far as biology or biology and everything is concerned? And the big I mean, I know we are with the big ticket. Yeah, yeah it is. And, and, and what's so special about it? Because, I mean, we, we all know, but maybe the our different might ecosystems know. meeting up create different kind of niche habitats that have allowed uh, things that wouldn't necessarily survive, say, in, in, in a pine forest, survive in a pine forest because you have this one little bog of uh, that's, that's more so it's like a, more. like a mashup. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, it's like crossroads. It's, it's like mm-hmm. microbiomes. Biological crossroads. It's like these microbiomes living in a larger biome. Right. Right. And, and then and that's, sort of the that's commingling unique. of them. And that's unique in, in, in comparison to like some other places. Right. I mean, you think about West Texas, I mean, just miles and miles and miles, it's all pretty much the exact same thing. It's all uniform thing. area. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. A, it's a ubiquitous habitat. Correct. I mean, yeah, that's true. We, we kind of have every animal, every insect, every we're, snake. We're, we're right in the, there's, you know, the kind of like the east zone and the west zone. Um, we're, we're right in the kind of right on the line where yeah. you're, Western species and Eastern species kind of meet up. Yeah, we have Western diamondback rattlesnakes. Yeah. Right. And water moccasins. And, and, or, t- I mean, Eastern. Timber rattlers. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and, and uh, but especially birding too, because we're right on the central that's flyway right. and mm, that's right. we're, you know, right on the Gulf. So that's a, that's it, a big thing in the big thicket. There's a lot of huge things in, yeah. yeah. in the big thicket. That's what the, that's what the Larson sanctuary is. It's like the bird sanctuary. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, that, that, that talk to people who said uh, they, they know people who come here. <laughs> they, they, they go thousands of miles. Oh, yeah. To uh, come yeah. and see the birds here. That's, yeah. I, and then down on kind of Sabine Pass area, there's the, another sanctuary down there. I think it's the Audubon that has it. Uh, Sabine Woods. I can't remember who owns it, but it's a huge birding. It's one of the first places the birds land when they cross over the Gulf. It's like a rest stop. Yeah. And so sometimes you'll be driving down there. Like I go down to Crystal Beach to, you know, to do a talk or something. And <clears throat> there will be just lines of cars up and down the road and people walking around with watch giant cameras. And yeah. <laughs> Look at those just, super long lenses. Yeah. Maybe. Super. I was just like, people how are much into it, man. money like, is this sort of like line of car? <laughs> Everyone has a $30,000 camera. Oh yeah. my God. It's, yeah, it's huge, man. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. you know, because some of these people, they shoot for National Geographic and stuff yeah. as like a hobby or something. Like a, that, yeah. that birding is, yeah, but birding is such a huge, yeah. huge yeah. Uh, hobby. Yeah. You know? It is a huge hobby. It's an industry. It's like yeah. an industry. They all have on the same clothes and it's like specific <laughs> clothing they have. Almost no, like uniforms. Yeah, it's it's, all, they have on their Columbia yeah. cameraman vests and the, and the appropriate cargo clothing. Shorts. Lots yeah. of appropriate clothing. Well, I wanted. I definitely. Well, the thing about the bird, the bird watching thing is, uh, like I said about that 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 buddy of ours who 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 was watching those whooping cranes. He's a duck hunter, you know. Mm-hmm. So like the. The, the hunters contribute a lot to these kind of societies and those kind of things and conservation. Right. And I wanted, uh, maybe in the second half, I think we're coming up on 40, and maybe in the second half we can talk about, uh, you mentioned that you knew about the uh, the the closing of Rollover Pass. Oh, yes. And uh, maybe we can kind of come back and, and talk about that a little bit and a couple other things and uh, yeah. and how that all affects fishing and, and, and the erosion on that area. Right. Sound good? It sounds good. All right. We'll be right back. Okay. Fast just to touch on it, and we can get into. And then go back. You want to talk about that? What do you want to? Yeah, well, that's, I, that's I teased cool. it. I can, I can do, I can redo that. No, that's fine. I mean, we're coming off this break, so we can come off this break however we want to. Okay. That's what the break's for. I definitely want to touch on rollover, but okay. Uh, no, let's let's let's. So then, so then you kick it off, and we'll talk about rollover, and uh, we'll say you we'll go say back to the muscles. You we'll say the stuff. I like what we were talking about just now. We're talking about the. Uh, Anyway, what we can. We just talk about a million uh, things. I'm, I'm, yeah, right. I can talk about anything. It's, I'm not. I don't know. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. I, don't let, I, don't let you, I don't let you lead the way this time here. You're going to let me? I, I led the way last? All right. <laughs> I've talked too much already. I'm self conscious. Are you? I, I find myself I to just, be very it's, conversationally it's dominant not, sometimes. Yeah, it's not. And it's not like a. I feel like there, there are definitely things that I'm trying to ask and things that I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. But I definitely don't want to, like, be the dick that like supersedes the conversation, you know, but I definitely, there, there are some, I need answers. I need answers. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll ask questions. Well, we're, uh, <laughs> well, we're, we're back from our little short break, you guys. And, uh, so one thing that we're very curious about and Zach's very curious about is how do you think 
that the uh, the plugging up or the removal of of rollover pass is is well, going to affect the environment. I, I guess like backstory. There's okay. So if you're not in Southeast Texas, there's this uh, there's a beach in Southeast Texas called Crystal Beach. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of it's kind of it's our local beach. It's it's, it's, a, it's closer, a sandy peninsula. Yeah, it's yeah. like Galveston Bolivar Peninsula. Bolivar Peninsula. Yeah. yeah, it's it's closer than Galveston to where we are, but it's it's um it's been it's 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 been eroding for a while, especially since the hurricanes that happened down here in the Gulf. Uh, but there's this popular fishing spot where they basically cut they cut a, a channel uh, into the peninsula and it allows water to pass through and uh, and it's been it's basically like what we were talking about earlier on the break uh, it's like a highway for fish like Aaron said yeah, yeah. and it's uh, or maybe you might have said I don't know anyway but it, it's it's always been this popular fishing spot because you can catch anything you want right. you know it's a, they're just getting pushed through here so but they're talking about closing it to help with erosion but they're also saying it'll help with the ecosystem so i just wanted to see if you could because a lot of a lot of people are mad because they're losing their good fishing spot right, a lot, of, a lot right. of very casual fishermen because we've all done it i've, yeah, I've gone I've, fishing I've fished there for a very long time. It's it's easy. you, you yeah. can sit there in a in a you know in a, in a camping chair with a cooler in a cast net and fish and drink beer for hours i mean people go they bring their own lights like generators right, right. i see them all the time to, yeah yeah so I mean I understand why oh, people yeah, are flounder. upset. Yeah, the catch about, the spot yeah. it's a really yeah. easy place to catch flounder. Yeah, in yeah. in in flounder, they their their populations are dwindling. So again, that would actually help. Cutting that off would give the flounder juvenile flounder. anyway. It what, makes what it, uh, okay, no. I want to actually hear about. Well, that. I mean, it would benefit the yeah. fishermen a lot if they would just let them do this. Right. right? It would so, help the it would help rebuild the fish population. So is it, like, is it because flounder, the flounder would they wouldn't just be going through there at the age they are? They would have to go all the way around or. Or their were or their young could would use that the back end kind of sure. as a nursery area, more oh, okay. like an estuary type. Thing. Oh, so we're basically we're leaving we're leaving the inside part of the peninsula to oh, defenseless. You're leaving the beachfront and then going back into like a lagoon type area. Right. So uh, what they did when they cut that through was made a direct access point mm. from what would be a backwater area into more of just like beachfront. And so naturally, yes. Completely different ecosystem. Yeah, completely right? different yeah. ecosystem. But the big, I mean, and I get it. I love fishing. Mm. And it is fun fishing there. And I've done it. And then people, you know, have stories. It is fun. It's super fun. I don't yeah. know. Probably, I, yeah. And you pictures all, going that, back into story, the. You like, you're like, man, I caught 40 fish today. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. And, and that's, where you caught, that's where you catch the big one. You hang out, yeah. talk to yeah. people, and just, you know. It, it, and I get it. It's an easy spot. But the problem is, yes, it, it will help long-term fisheries be more sustainable but the other problem is bolivar peninsula is washing away yeah Every well you time. see it now the high tide goes over the highway sometimes yeah yeah and, and i don't know if you remember like highway 87 in between sabine pass yeah that's been shut down for how long now well, it's not there so ni- yeah it's gone 1980 something oh, I, forget, wow. I forget which hurricane because i see on the comments on the news yeah. pages whenever they talk about crystal beach they always start Bolivar Peninsula. They always talk about rebuild Highway. You know? No, it, yeah, it was. It you can was, you can get through it if you have a, a, a good. I four think by I four. was I was in junior high or maybe wow. elementary school or something when the, the that hurricane came through and they were mm-hmm. like, we're not rebuilding this again. Yeah, because right, right. it had only been ten years. Well, or so, getting, so they're gonna the, have to build a big ass curve into that that beach yeah, road. That, that one turn. That turn and it's it gets washed tide. it gets washed over every high tide. Every yeah. time I well, go you know, out there, I, I live in Bird City and are you familiar with Bird City? Have you ever been down to Bailey's Road? People go down there and fish quite a bit. Uh, on Lake no. Street. I've been to Pleasure Island a lot. I don't know if it's the yeah. same thing. No, it's not the same yeah. thing. <laughs> 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 no. But it's kind of by the Rainbow Bridge. Mm-hmm. Um anyway, yeah they they paved that road and it's like high tide covers that road so uh, they paved it after ike now it's pretty much gone again so yeah water erodes uh, uh water erodes a road yeah. is is, Very is quick closing which, which is closing the back past to, gonna fix that which would go take us back to that yes yes so if you give water it, path of least resistance mm-hmm. correct right mm-hmm. so you're talking about tidal action 24 7 eroding away at that at that section that's just on a regular basis and then you have something like a storm front come through which a lot even of energy. Yeah. yeah yeah you have that a much more water. more water energy i mean mm-hmm. water is the most destructive force on the planet pound for pound right. so mm-hmm. you've allowed it to have a super highway to go yeah it's about the just... cubic cubic feet of water per minute and when you're yeah. talking so about it's storms, kind of the same yeah, same cubic, as you're yeah. talking with the delta and, and Mississippi the, the or... weight of that the force mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah same thing and then yes when you have like the most of our major waterways are now channelized so they don't meander they don't rebuild deltas the water just goes offshore 
mm. way out into the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, not the water, the sediment goes way out into the Gulf of Mexico and doesn't rebuild barrier islands. So you're just losing and losing and losing. And then you go in and make something like Rollover Pass. Yeah, and- that's a that's a really interesting thing. You can like so you can you can just use and observe, or you can just observe yourself to actually see what we're talking about. So you could go to Village Creek mm-hmm. and see how a naturally formed uh, stream will do with with sediment, and it will build. And since the sediment of Village Creek is sand right. mainly, it's, it's traveling through a sand sandy place. Yes. Uh, each side of the creek will form a sandbank mm-hmm. wherever it banks, and then the next side will bank. And then if you look at the channelized Natchez River, yeah, there's no sand, there's no, no. sediment. It's just like straight ninety degrees into the water. It's mm-hmm. a raceway. So yeah. yeah, so the water, yeah. so the water flows so fast right. through it, it has no time for the sediment to deposit anywhere. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's and that's what you're talking about. So it's it's an easy thing to observe if you yes. pay attention. Yeah, yeah. You, your your roughness. It's kind of like you sprung is you sprung a leak on each of those ecosystems and you right. Just, right. So instead yeah. of there being sandbanks or Stability. silt banks, right, or you know little islands or whatever, or you oxbows, call it. you know when oxbows. it would cut off a, a, a the the meandering cuts off and creates its own ecosystem. I mean the mm-hmm. oxbows are like like with back to alligator. It's kind of like a little spinning pool on the in, on the. It's corner. very productive. It's a very mm-hmm. productive little. Yeah, it's where uh, it's where the current like slows down. They, to they nothing. do kind of like a little sheet. They showed how how the the water kind of pounds down the coast. Mm-hmm. And then whenever it hits the rollover pass, it kind of builds up there and washes out. Right. And then it stops from here. So this is getting pounded instead of just getting every, instead of the sediment that could be passed from up here all the way down to the gets, tip. Yeah. It gets gathered right here and sent in. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of going all the way to that area that's getting washed out. Now they said it would help that. Right. And it, and it will help yeah. that when, when you, when you take that off. I mean, it's going to put the water back to the natural pattern. They're so. trying to, they're trying to buy the, the apparently that, that little piece of land is like private property. So they were, they're going to have an imminent donate. Yeah. Uh, you mean, you mean rollover domain. pass is, the, is private property? whoever built rollover pass, it was like a fisherman society. So it's privately owned land along that little, that, really? that hmm. pass. Yeah. So they're going to have to imminent domain them. I think they're fighting it. That's, I read about it and there was yeah. a guy who was like a, he was like a, an, a pro-am fisherman and he commented and he had this long post and it was very well thought out, very mm-hmm. logical, exactly kind of what, what we're talking about here is like, this is a good thing. Right. And, uh, and it got buried and yeah. I tried to, I tried to find that guy, but I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't find the post again. But I know someone It was mostly just people a, bitching about it. So. An article on, on that mm-hmm. from, I think it's a Parks and Wildlife or something. If I can find it, I'll send it to Cool. Y'all. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to see it because it. I, I remember seeing that, and I, I know all the outrage, but I just really, I, I, I we've talked about it before, me and Aaron have, is uh, about trying to find a connection. And I, uh, my, our buddy Chris, Chris Presley, who knows you, mm-hmm. we we yeah. we had a thing we were trying to do, and we wanted to. One of the ideas we had is to try to connect uh, the people who are um, ecologists or who are people who study and, and know how this stuff works, uh, and connecting the conservation movement with uh, people who uh, most of, most of the people around here who are against. Or act like they're against those things is they're fishermen, they're hunters. They just don't and know, and they get affected by climate change just as much yeah. as the, the, anybody else does. And, and a lot of that, it, it's just a lack of honestly, like on the scientific part of reaching the community. Yeah, especially the people that are out there accessing it, enjoying it. Mm-hmm. There, there is a there's a gap between a gap, uh, y'all, yeah. y'all An the scientists, gap. and the people who are making use of what y'all are studying. Right. right? Yeah, and what, and and. I don't know if it's because there's not money. <laughs> I, I really don't know. That that's a whole other issue. Like why? But but that is a lot of it. There's just a lack of outreach because when you think about mm. it, you're you both want the same thing. Yeah. You both want a healthy fishery. You right. both both don't want the peninsula to wash away. So. Yeah. And you studying these fish, you want people to still fish, though. So, right. You know. Oh, totally. Yeah. Uh, I I hunt and fish. Uh, mm-hmm. I grew up that way, and I enjoy both. And. I think that so whatever you sound like a tree hugger me. Tell you, <laughs> what are you vegan? What are you vegan right now? You want, you know, you want to take away my you want to take away my meat and my guns? <laughs> you can't eat them muscles. You can't no eat more. them muscles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but they're good. Again, back to that. Don't good. don't eat them. Don't eat them. Well, don't Aaron, eat them now. Aaron, no, not 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 nothing to do. Nothing I saw to do with their endangered. Last week, Allison, he's not. They're filter feeders. <laughs> they're long lived filter feeders. So you're saying they bioaccumulate every nasty thing. So you're saying they're just <laughs> nasty. How long do they yeah. live? 
Um, like the little, they're like these little it, things. They can yeah. live over a hundred years. Are you serious? Okay. Yes. So can I yeah. ask? You, can I also ask you too that? Okay. So think about a hundred years worth of of of, of uh, stuff coming out yeah. of the paper mills, uh-huh. stuff coming out oh, of the petrochemical industry, yeah. Yeah. in the flesh of that muscle. Don't so eat the muscles. Any, do they have any pearls? Uh, they do. Really? They are. They are. Um, Related to the pearly mussels, actually, it, one of the biggest I need to problems. Get some Village Creek pearls. It sounds like a country song. <laughs> they, the freshwater freshwater <laughs> pearls aren't. <laughs> that's that's a brother cousin song. <laughs> we're going <laughs> we're going back to their. Okay, so another one that's in Village Creek is called the Louisiana Fat Mucket. <laughs> What? The Louisiana Fat Nugget. Who is name? Who is Boudreaux and Thibodeau naming these clams? These you would muscles? think. You would think. Yeah. Like really? Yeah. The Louisiana Fat Mucket. There's a Texas Fat Mucket. We don't have that one though. That's more Central well, that's Texas. That's more Central yeah, Texas. Yeah, that's they, like they, clear, clear. That's water. one of them clear water. <laughs> it's the Fat Nugget. Mucket. 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 Okay. Mucket. I thought you said Fat Nugget. That'll make more sense. <laughs> yeah. It's still. No, and then there's Three Horn Warty back. We do have that one. Is it like got bumps on its back? Yeah. It does. <laughs> Three of them. Are, okay. So do you have? Are there a lot of goofy names well, of things yeah. that get named? Like, oh, totally, totally, yeah. and, and, and even some Latin names are goofy. Like there's a on purpose. Um, oh, on purpose, yeah. <laughs> Science has got a good sense. They just add like an is or super or, cheesy or something yeah. to the end of it. You uh, know? I want to say it was like a like a like molluscus a, ugliest. <laughs> ugliest. <yeah. laughs> that's just like the nastiest looking. Yeah, yeah, he named yeah. it after his wife, right? See, yeah. No, yeah. there are. There's a the. I think it's it's some kind of like a marine worm. It looks really hairy and gross, and it it was discovered during the Baywatch phenomenon, oh, and so man. it's like Let's something Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff <laughs> yeah, and then, like, so many Latin names are like that. That's I the know, only yeah. one I could think you of right off the, the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, to like, it, yeah, it's totally legit. No way can shut it down. No, so you can't you can't pull like a Buddy McBoat face and they change it. They put it on the submarine in the back. No, you could you could totally make your own. That's awesome. If you we wanted to, to it, as long here. as it fit the taxonomic hey, nomenclature. Uh, there's a lot of things out there left to be discovered. You know? Oh, tons of things. Oh, uh, Big you, Thicket again. Yeah. Uh, Is there any new discoveries? So, lots of new discoveries. Really? So there's a there's a program here. It's part of the national park system called the Thicket of Diversity, it's and I want to say that there have been fifty species of mushrooms what? or fungi how many discovered. Are psych- how many are psychedelic? Um, just the one, mm-hmm. <laughs> just the one. But that okay. one, we already knew about that one. Oh yeah. Okay. But new species, new to science, oh, yeah, discovered out. here. Uh, there's a crawfish that only lives in the thicket. I mean, what? there's this, yeah. How big is it? It's it, well, and, and, and going back to the scientific name, it's, it's not very big. And, it's small and clear. It's a very small one, but it's it. really? it's something it. like kunsii or something because it's oh, in kunsii. Yeah, that's so, awesome. So, so it's, it's it's like it, there's a there's a crawfish that's like native to kunsii. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 That's Endemic. Super interesting. Really. Endemic. To like kunsii. that's where they've always been. That's where they've don't always been, and they don't place. really go. Yeah, I mean, nobody knows. Else. Nobody really like they know the big thing that they got taken out there on a field trip, but like nobody right. knows just how. Just I mean, right. we, well, like they, like we was, asked that's earlier, what I like, said this really in is the very beginning place, was yeah. it's it's that the fact that we were introduced to the idea yeah, of where we lived, hanging out in the creek. Yeah. Right. And, dude, and we, that's, I that's ran when, in the woods as a kid. So, so that's yeah. when, yeah. when you're a kid, that's when your idea of the I world is being developed. I grew up outside of Orangefield. Right. So right. There, there, there so, wasn't much out there. But. Yeah, when you're, when you're growing up, you're developing your idea of what the world is. Mm-hmm. And when your idea of what the world is, is where we grew up. It's just not special. It's just not very special to you. Right. And if you never leave, then you don't. Right. Then you don't really appreciate. It's like, oh, look, another damn that's whooping a, crane. A complete God. shame. So I, a shame. for a while, I did outreach on a boat here. It was like a pontoon did education. Did you do any boat. Of those river wait, tours? wait, was it uh, the the bill? Um, yeah, that one. Yeah, we we did a pirate. Trip. We had, I did a pirate party <laughs> on that uh, last year. <laughs> nice, y'all did that. I won. Yeah, yeah I won. I won. A well, he 20, won it. I won it. From and he was like, "Let's make it a pirate party." party. <laughs> That's awesome. It threw KLB them. It threw them off a little bit. <laughs> but they they yeah, they, they, had had they had fun. They had fun. So I, I used to work there. That's um, yeah, awesome. I was thinking about I was, doing another. I was pirate telling party. you about them earlier. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's back to our earlier conversation. Yeah. I was thinking about having another party. You want to go? Yeah, you want to? Do it. Sure, I'd it's, like to go. Like you, can, you, can, you can tell us cool stuff, but you can like drink while you do it. Yeah. You don't have to work. Yeah, and if I couldn't, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll have exactly. a great one. Exactly. We'll have to plan yeah. another one of those out. I, I know how I actually rewired the whole acoustic system on that boat. And, wow. and yeah. the uh, the entire electrical system. That was a really yeah. good time. The so, toilet I wasn't too impressed with. You didn't even I will, do with that, did you? I will. Uh, the what? The pump toilet I wasn't too impressed with. Oh, yeah. Well, that's okay. You shouldn't yeah, have been it, using it in the first yeah. place. I tried to get him to remove that when I was there. You can pee in water, right? Why are you trying to 
abuse our water waste. I didn't Zach. poop in it the doesn't water, go in. Okay? It's it's a self contained like, system. I'm, just, I'm doing I'm so much less. That's why I'm I, would, so I really discourage people are. because when I worked there, that was kind of my job was. To, oh yeah. Like, no, it doesn't work today. Sorry. <laughs> 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 you can hold it for the one hour two. That was a, no, I couldn't hold it. That, that was a that was a really that was a really neat thing. When to there's do. alcohol in. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, beer. Anyway. So I mean, I mean, we had fun with it, right? I'm talking about children. I made it. A, I made it a pirate party, and we had fun. But yeah. it was also uh, really cool. We went down like slews of. Yeah, the I mean, it, it was to a point where you couldn't hear yeah, Tim civilization Malvio. anymore. Yeah, that yeah, was great. We yeah. got these little. Great. I was little. Yeah. So, so when I was what we were talking about earlier with the saltwater intrusion and them and enlarging the ship channel to uh, get more business into the port of Beaumont, basically, it's going to destroy that ecosystem. Oh no! Because that's uh, south of the saltwater barrier. So is, that'll yeah, get messed is. up because they're fixing the beach. Not, not the beach. No, uh, no, no, no. No, the uh, try. They're they want to widen and deepen the ship channel, and I'm pretty sure it's been approved. Where, where, which, where? Uh, the Natchez. In the Natchez, uh, okay. in Sabine Lake. Oh wow! To get larger ships further up, closer to the refineries. Well, I mean, we talked kind of. We talked to, with, uh, about about this with Sarah with Sabine Lake. It used to be a spear fishing for flounder, right? Right. Yeah. So and, they're gonna do it more. Yeah, they're gonna do. They're gonna do more. Um, what do you think? There's you actually think gonna. They're happen? they're gonna build one of the largest. They, they're they're building a new natural gas place too. That's gonna get even more ships up and down. And I think that's right. Kind it's of by Pleasure be, Island. Oh, okay, Pleasure Island. Well, that's well. You don't need to widen anything. If it's, they need to deepen it though. You don't know what to, expect. to get the, the the. They want super tankers. So like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, So super tank. So deepening things to get super tankers to Port Arthur. Mm-hmm. Would affect things in the nature. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and how exactly like, how would that happen? happen? You want to pull up a Should pull up a uh, Google Earth a map? Okay. Yeah. Like, here, uh, here. Go ahead. Let's see Google Earth Pro, and I'll show you. But I mean, water again. It's that whole point of least resistance thing. Yeah. Um, it's going to allow salt water to get further up into what is now a freshwater ecosystem. Oh, so it's just going to allow the salt water to, well, you, you say intrude or intrusion? Uh-huh. Is what you say? Is, yeah, that, is that what it's called? Just means it's going to get further up. It's going to come. Wow. So instead of just being like Sabine Lake, it's pretty salty. It's going to be like so the, those, up to the salt water barrier is going to be Those really trees salty. are going to be no more. The cypress trees are going to be no more. Really? Yeah. And that, a lot of them. That that's going to make that area look really weird. Up here? Yes. That will have, yeah. If it's salt water, I don't want any bull no. sharks up here. No, it's like no. we're gonna get overtaken yeah. by, by by shark experts if they keep doing all this shit. <laughs> so y'all y'all know this is this is the inevitability of what's gonna happen. Uh, yeah. How does that feel to know that that they're doing a project you can, that you know is gonna happen? You know the, you know what the outcome is kind of gonna be. Kind of like that the, really that depressing. that meme on Facebook that says at the beginning of every horror movie, there's a scientist saying <laughs> hey. that, that no one's listening to. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, hey, hey don't do this. The, and, and the biggest thing too. So you're not just talking about ecosystems. I mean, you are talking about ecosystems, but I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Uh, it's the internet's all screwed oh, okay. up. So when oh, here, when yeah, you're when the trees start dying off and the grasses start dying mm-hmm. off. More and more erosion will happen more easily because the sediment in, in those backwater areas, like in the in the backwaters off the Natchez River, those are really fine silt yeah. type sediments. The only thing holding them in place are the roots of the aquatic vegetation. Right. That's when right. that dies, that silt's not going to be held in place, so you're going to start losing more and more like shoreline constantly every mm-hmm. time there's wave action. I understand what you mean. Yeah. Every so time, and not just wave for? action. Uh, um, just do Google Earth Pro what, and get us so get if, a picture of where. If we you are. guys are listening and you're not really sure what we're talking about, you know that fine gumbo mud. When you're this a kid, is, you know, yeah. you, when you when you, yeah. when you, when you, when you it, step it, off and it, without, the shoe just sinks. Mm-hmm. And it's just, uh, it's just like really soupy. Fine. It's that's that gumbo yeah. mud. That's what yeah. we're talking about. Gumbo so, mud. Gumbo. Uh, gumbo whenever earth. Oh, this is kind of yeah. Whenever, yeah. So bring us down to like Riverfront Park in Beaumont or something would be good. Can we just search for it? Riverfront Park. Right. So so when all that that starts washing out, you, it just kind of creeps up. It goes. I I want to say it's this Thursday at the Gray Center in Beaumont. There's a um, professor that's going to be doing a, a lecture on salt burn, basically, and hmm. that's what this is. So your cypress trees start dying off, your tupelo trees start dying off, your freshwater marsh grasses yeah. start dying off. You lose sediment, you lose land. Um, so it's just a progression. 
So instead of, like I said, Sabine Lake being kind of the, the stop of the, the majority of the salt, it's going to be up to the saltwater barrier. Yeah. The yeah. only thing preventing salt getting past that point in the Natchez literally will be that, that barrier. That saltwater barrier, yeah, yeah. The rest mm. of that they're expecting to be, like the, during uh, a few years ago when we didn't have any rain, Sabine Lake was saltier than the Gulf. That could happen all the way up to the saltwater barrier now. So, and huge impact. So you think storms, not just not just like the one we just had, which was washing downstream, but but storms like Ike washing upstream. Right. All of that wave action, places like Bridge City that tend to flood, it's just going to be worse. It's n- there's no way it's not going to be worse. Right. You're losing land. You're losing land. And gonna- at the same time, we're. Our our population here is growing. Yeah, is yeah, it? for sure. Yeah. So slightly. I think well, the, the last time really well, we've, were, we've been spouting the statistic for well, the we've last about, like five or six episodes. Okay, well, about that. So that's Beaumont, but we're talking about the surrounding. Oh area. yeah, we're okay. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I, I wasn't trying, trying to, I wasn't to call you a liar. The golden, the <laughs> no. golden triangle. Is, fucked, the golden triangle yeah. is growing. Yeah, people are running out of Beaumont to yeah, other places right. where they shouldn't probably live in the Golden oh, Triangle. They're living that's in marshes, the right? That's... Um, eat Lumberton up in those areas that are yeah. floodplains, that they're right. living in floodplains. The floodplains, as far as I know, FEMA hasn't really updated a lot of the floodplain yeah. imagery since the 70s. There's been a lot of economic growth. There's been a lot of infrastructure mm-hmm. growth here. So <laughs> you think about it. We have constant. We, we rain all the time. We just like, oh, yeah. in the last storm we had sixty something inches of rain. No, we rain. We, we rain so. We, the we get as much rain as a rainforest uh, we, does. Yeah, the thing about uh, the a thing about the big gets, thicket. The yep. thing about the big thicket is it's the only. Um, how, how do I say this correctly? It's the only jungle in uh, North America. So is this is this the part where we were right here? And uh, uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, no, I think that's right. So you can see the old oxbows that have, with the channelization, you've got little areas like that that probably used to right be here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's use it this way. Yeah. So all this so through we're, here we're looking is, at we're looking at a map, a satellite map imagery of uh, Riverfront Park. If y'all want to go check it out, and we're going Nages, yeah. north yeah, of I ten, and all of this through here is is channelized. This oxbow right here leads oh, to like wow. a manufacturer. I think it's a gravel or would something you, company. So would, you like, call, like little, would you call that an ox bay if it's uh, very obviously channelized? It looks like a little cul-de-sac. Yeah, yeah ox bows look fish. like little cul-de-sac. Yeah. <laughs> so so that used to be it natural, but they cut drenched. it out now. Actually, this used to be cut off, and they, they reopened it so oh, these yeah. people can get to their um, – they ship in and out of here. Uh, I think it's aggregate, like a... Like yeah, it's uh, probably Knife River, I yeah. think. Knife, knife yeah. River, yeah, aggregate. Yeah, so they can get their ships in. So that oxbow used to be cut off. Uh, then you go further up. So all of this What's in that here... that little tributary right there? That might be... That is 10 Mile Bio. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's, so that's where, where, the, down, that's where you went on the that's boat. That's where we went okay. on the yeah. So we went tour. up a little way in the But see back. all this green in here? Yeah. yeah. When the salt water starts coming up, this is not going to be green anymore. Yeah, it's going to be dead. Right. And then, wow. like, you're going to have some subsidence. You know, that's a right. huge well, issue. That's, that's, huge that's where issue. we're going to put our new condos whenever we expand on downtown, right? No, no. Make sure you, 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 you dig deep I'm and joking, build yeah. them way higher. Well, you, I mean, have you air. been to Venice? You know, it's very nice. Your feet get a little wet. <laughs> It'll be the new city of floating yeah, biter. I mean, I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a gimmick, you know? Well, you're another thing they're trying to do. I'm trying to own it. They're trying to, they also want to put a toll road and biter that goes through this section right here. Wait, just cuts across to where? To to, to 105. To it goes from 69 to 105. Okay. To um, like so this is this is all big thicket. This is so all na- national preserve. All that's going to be dead. Well, that from the from the saltwater intrusion. In yeah. How many years? Um, Your estimate, I guess, a rough estimate. Let's see, rough estimate. It depends on the weather. I mean, that's that's yeah. square. That's square miles. But twenty miles. I mean, twenty that's, years. I would say that's so many square miles yeah. of of of, yeah. of. And then of, also, you can't. So there's and no this is habitats. Very productive. Ecosystem. Yeah. There's no definitive way to say. So you are still finding Allison, new things there. Allison, yes. Allison couldn't yes. say. Allison couldn't tell you within a year. Yeah. She couldn't tell you within yeah, five years. Yeah, I know. But because it's, each each one of these. It's so, judging from the history of what's happened before. You know, that's probably what could right, happen. Right. Well, but right. each plant has uh, it's a, a different tolerance mm-hmm. and hardiness yeah. and so then, be, and but then, i can tell you that all of these it's plants so I much understand. Further there's down so many different yeah. factors yeah and then but. and then all of the and then all of the insects and the and the fauna and everything yeah. eat those but you know it's it's, it's, it's going to be a drastic change oh it'll be a drastic change it's going to be a huge yeah. change and you know that like uh this right here oh come back right here do you remember 
Look how that's not green anymore. Dude, no, yeah, it's it's remember that used to just be like a field of trees, right? Is that from I, salt water? I don't remember. That's that. from Ike. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. And uh, cypress trees live. Yeah. Like, so that's a uh, like a fifteen hundred years. A cypress that's basically tree right by that. That's by the I ten bridge. So right. you, you could have like looked off. I-10 yeah, you could look off I ten. Yeah. yeah you, no, it you is kind of sparse now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You wow. can look out and you see dying trees and cypress trees. They live for fifteen hundred years. Right. Yeah, and the, the, the yeah. land. Things that are long lived, like trees that are long lived, like that, take a long time to die. They're still dying off from the saltwater intrusion from Ike. From, so Ike. So Ike was like the, the after Rita, Ike was just like a bullshit storm, right? For the most part, compared to what we've Wait, had what, recently. What, no, right? no not, Ike, not at all. Or was Ike before Rita? Uh, or Katrina? Rita was the no, one Rita with was, high winds. Rita, Rita was. Uh, and that was before Ike. Rita was 2005. Two or yeah, because I didn't think three. much happened from Ike. We didn't even leave the house. What you're thinking of is Rita was three weeks before Katrina. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, ta- I'm talking about Ike. Ike came after those. Those That was in 2008. That didn't seem like a big deal. It was a big deal. It, fl- huh. uh, it flooded. Ike, uh, Ike was in 2008, yeah, and Katrina was Rita deal. was in 2005. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I get, I get that now. But like, Ike I didn't was, think it was the, the storm force from I, that one. It was one. a storm surge. <clears throat> yeah. Is what yeah. It did. yeah, yeah, and it flooded Bridge City. It flooded. Okay. Uh, it's it the flooded one that took Galveston. out Galveston, yeah, parts yeah, of Houston. Yeah. We weren't affected. I don't think Beaumont was affected, but Houston, Galveston. It killed the damn trees, up. Yeah, For Port Arthur. Yeah. So it, it basically just like flooded that land with salt. Right. And just yeah. it salted the fields like yeah. the Mongols. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah and those a, trees are so old that it's dick, taking man. them a long time to die. So, uh, like, But they're still dying. Yeah. I mean, you're like, thinking, they're, you're oh, they're about, preserved now. And, and also, and this this whole wars. thing here, somebody Same like thing. built a levee around thing. it. So it all the salt of the earth. Someone wanted, the person wanted, they wanted to make this into a development, like a neighborhood right. back in the days, from what I understand. So the person I mean, that would be a fancy little strip if they start widening the damn channels up and ruining it, right? Like, that'd be a nice The dude built a levee around it, which made the salt water just stay in it which is why those trees <laughs> so in particular are, in. were dying and the ones around it were fine yeah oh, exactly no. so th- that goes back to our protection with levees issue like that's uh it's not really a solution no protection wait, wait what do you mean you mean uh levees are not a solution for- <laughs> levees no they i mean that created a basically a saltwater swimming pool um, yeah yeah but it's <clears throat> So when water gets but over a, a levee... Right, but it's like storm protection, though, isn't it? To a point. It's a, a false point. sense of security. It's almost like living in a gated community. and You're like, oh, I don't have to worry about anything. I live in a gated community. Yeah, but most of the time, you don't have to worry about anything in but a gated community. But when you do, it's usually worse. But what... Okay, all right. Yeah. Plus, uh, you can get into just about any gated community fairly easily. I mean, yeah, it's true. I, I, I see the... Uh, I see the... The metaphor, it's right? Just, it's just interesting. It's once interesting well, and once water surveys. breaches that levee, mm-hmm. it just stays there. There, it's not yeah. Then it's on the other side. It's, right. it's hard to come and out. That, and that's kind of what yeah. you know with with Katrina. And uh, the other thing with like with Ike is that the storm force, the storm surge from it, and the winds were pushing so much water back into like Lake Pontchartrain that it mm-hmm. actually prevented the runoff from Katrina and reflooded the Ninth Ward. Really? Yeah. Are they are they experiencing uh, similar things as well in like the Pontchartrain? So the Pontchartrain is very large, and are they experiencing the same sort of uh, with the ecological damage from salt or? I I really don't, don't know. know. I was just curious. I really don't yeah. know. See, I now I hate to sound like a broken record, but I'm more concerned about Village Creek and the and the big thick of natural yep. preserve and stuff than anything else. So, uh, when, when what we're looking at right now on on Google Maps is. Uh, all of this area, it's super close to urbanization. And while it's very nice, it's almost like I don't care as much about it. And that's, that's, that's my fault. You know, that's my bias, yeah. but see, that's the paper mills. Uh, oh, is that what that is? Right there. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's nasty. <laughs> Growing up, everyone called it the stink ditch because it came from the paper mill. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, so we'll go up here. We'll find village. here's the saltwater barrier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can. It's it's obvious on the yeah. on the screen because there's a difference in color. And then we'll go up to here, and this is Pine Island Bio. Mm-hmm. That's Pine Island Bio. Yeah, and LNBA, right? Yeah. Uh, no, it's sort of a, a natural body. And then where's Village Village Creek? Village Creek is a little north of that. Yeah. Right. Well, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot because I've uh, I've kayaked down the hole. I've yeah. kayaked from like. Uh, the Lumberton Bridge, I've kayaked from that to the saltwater 
barrier? Oh, so that the Lumberton Bridge, that, that used to be a very productive uh, muscle bed. Really? Mm-hmm. And for the, the species that I'm studying, the, one, uh, the triangle and Texas pigtoes, the two endangered. So those are, those are uh, specific species that you're studying out of the 23? Mm-hmm. Yeah, varieties. I mean, it, those are the ones that I'm focusing on because they're the, the, the state threatened and the ones that have the genetic component in question. Because you think they might be separate? Because they, yes, and right. if they're, they're not separate, it would affect their standing as far as um, federal listing for being endangered. If they're the same thing, then, yeah. Then, then not, nobody cares not, about them. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you know, but it, it's, yeah. it's something we need to know. So that needs to be clarified. But anyway, that there used to be a bed there that even as recently as 2014, um, just in a one hour, one person hour survey, they found over 80 individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get to do that prior to the hurricane. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get to, to survey that specific stretch. But do you know where the... Uh, yep, where the bridge washed out. Do you remember mm -hmm. seeing on the news? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's it. That's that's where that site was. So I went back once the uh, storm water wasn't toxic as much. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll have to look at the day. I don't remember. But there, there, there were zero, zero, zero clams. Zero. Uh, the clams, only thing that muscles, muscles yeah, yeah. yeah. The only thing that was there was uh, like broken up road base and the sure. rebar. What's between a clam and a mussel? Because I've been misspeaking. Uh, Really, it's their in-current, ex-current um, siphon aperture. It's it's their because they they filter feed and they have bigger mouths and smaller mouths. They have smaller mouths, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not a whole lot of different, but yeah. And and some of their embryology is a little bit different. They're, they're how they make babies. Yes. Oh, oh, I'm right. oversimplifying what you're saying. Oversimpli I'm sorry. Okay, so let, me, so let me get back to so what brought me to study freshwater mussels. Yeah. I know this is completely divergent. Uh, no, that's fine. fine. No, we're no. used to it. We're about to talk about the life cycle, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 They have the greatest life cycle ever. So um, my thing when I went to grad school, I wanted to study fish. I love fish. I, I love alligator guard. I mean, just mm -hmm. fish. So I started, actually, the first thing I studied was uh, fountain darters. They're an endangered Darter that lives in the San Marcos and the the Comal Rivers. Yeah, no, yeah, I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. I, I was mm -hmm. doing, I did diet work, I did diet analysis. So that's another strange like little. Ate. Yeah. How do you study that? Oh my god! <laughs> like, so, how do you study something so small? You go out and you collect yeah. a bunch of them because they're the only reason they're endangered is is geographic isolation. Like they're it's the same thing very as where we live. Yeah, it's the same thing with them. these tiny little yeah. geographic yeah. places and they have whatever the fresh water salamanders within, within their yeah. within their system. Fountain darters are are, are plentiful, but mm -hmm. the the thing is if if. Anything happen Some, to that ecosystem, they'd be gone. They'd be gone, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so the, there's a fishery there, a hatchery there that, that rears them and keeps them going. But So what we would do, we'd go out and sample, collect them, preserve them, bring them back to the lab, cut them open, and identify every item in their stomach. Oh, you mean How like you a like a license? like a trashy shark that eats license yeah. plate, but only like a tiny on a darter. microscopic. Scale. Oh, so you, you you get the DNA of what's in their gut? Uh, no, no, we would. You can you just see it. Like you can see, see it. Are they big, yeah, big you can see or? if it was plant. No, matter they're or, they're only yeah. about this big. They're tiny, but you can tell what they're, they're eating. Like a minnow with a microscope. Yeah, huh. a really high powered. Wow, that's incredible. Digital microscope. So yeah, and and then you have to you have learn. To get a permit to hunt for these endangered species. Oh, absolutely. Really? Yeah, there's a lot well, of. It's probably through the university. Well, and, so you, you're limited right. to a certain amount. You can only take them at certain when, times. And working through the federal fish hatchery in San Marcos, wow. and that's actually where we did all the diet and where we use their microscopes, their equipment. They got all the data. So so, so life life cycle of the. Of the We'll get back to it. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so the life cycle of the mussels. Uh, so it's um, fish. Uh, fish are interesting, whatever. And uh, the university got a new professor, and her specialty was freshwater mussels. And I was like, well, that's they don't they're they're sessile. They just kind of sit there and fil filter feed. That's not very exciting. So you weren't too keen on them at first. Not You're at like, all. Uh, this is kind of boring. Not at all. Yeah, yeah. I'm like I get their importance. Blah blah blah. blah. They just What's bury in, themselves in the sand. Yeah, yeah, it just sits there. It's like a, like looking at a rock. Yeah, rocks are interesting. It but spits whatever. at you. Big deal. Yeah, yeah. Cares. yeah. Tastes pretty good, but. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so their life cycle, their their larvae are parasites on fish, their oh. fish gills, like a, like a barnacle, type of, yeah, a tiny like. fish gill oh, parasite. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. So look up um, mussel larva. Freshwater uh, glochidia is what, well. You probably just do mussel freshwater mussel fish, larva. But they uh, so so in they, Missouri because there's a really good video. Which one? Freshwater mussels, Missouri. Missouri. Okay. There's a a professor, Dr. Larva Barnhart. Yeah, 
there who's gotten some really good footage of this. So let me so, so let me guess. These uh, so the larvae attach themselves to a fish in mm -hmm. order to travel and find a new place to deposit. Absolutely, because how else would they be able to recolonize well, upstream reaches? Fins. Yeah, yeah, so they don't, don't swim. Let's see. Yeah. Is it, is it these uh, see if you do videos. Oh no. <laughs> um, they so the they actually have internal fertilization, which is really rare for a sessile organism because how are they gonna reach each other? So they live in muscle beds. They have the the females have internal fertilization, mm -hmm. and in order to get their parasitic larva onto a fish, they've developed these crazy adaptations, lures basically. Uh, some of them look exactly like Maybe a darker muscle and bass. Uh, yes, yeah, that's the one. So blind evolution, they, muscles can't see. This no. has all happened just over millions of years of, of random mutations. Uh, so some of them, I mean, literally it looks just like a minnow. So they display this and a fish comes over and strikes at it because oh, they yeah. think it's its food. Mm -hmm. And the female muscle actually like exhales and injects her larva into the fish mouth, which are, the, you know, right into the gills because right. it passes through. And it sticks. And it well, sticks. Some, of, some of them stick. Some yeah. of them stick, yeah. 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 I mean, they, there's, they, they shoot, you know, millions of them. So right. They, well, they don't. Courtesy of Spectrum, it's going to take a little bit. So <laughs> we'll just keep going. Pay your internet bill. But Dude, this, no, it's paid. It's just shit. This is, this is a really, it's a good video that shows it because it's just unbelievable. You think, how can something that has no sight have developed something uh, that looks that exactly right. like another organism? All right, uh, well. We're looking. We're we're watching this video, and some of them and are so specific buffer. that their parasitic larva can only grow on. So this is this is an important thing too. I, I really, yeah. whenever you were just telling that story, imagery of like bass, yeah, popped up in my head. But this is like a little minnow. No, he's he, they are doing bass. The, yeah. These, these are, are going to shoot them into bass. They're going to look like a minnow oh, okay. and get the bass to come over. Oh, I see. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah. But some of them are so specific that their larva can only live on one species of fish. So you hmm. have this evolutionary link where... What was that thing? What did you see? Did you see a minnow? Oh, okay. I think so. Where if you lose that species of fish, you lose that species of muscle. Right, right. So there's the lure. Oh, wow. That's no oh, way. Oh, what? Yeah. No, that's what it made? So there's a darter. And that's, this right here. That's the Yeah, that's the muscle. That's a muscle. Mm-hmm. That's not a fish. They no. didn't capture that a fish. That looks like it's holding yeah. a fish like, hey, dinner time, boy. It looks just like the other I fish. I know. Yeah, Are you so serious? this is why I decided to study mussels. That's what most of them do? Not well, the Lampsilis ones, which yeah. are, we have a lot of those here. Wow, that's incredible. That is, that is yeah. insane. And they all have some type. They might not be as elaborate as that one. But some. they have no eyes, and they made an organic-looking creature. They evolved Correct. Well, organic. complete blind well, evolution. That's crazy. The thing about evolution is it doesn't it, take it, Look, eyes. it even has a mouth. Yeah. Yeah, like it's a amazing. it's a good copy of it's a, just it's such oh, a good it right right yeah. it's, so it's a, it's in a casing yeah so it, it's it's, it's, it's part of, of the mantle eggs. it's it's flesh yeah do, do they think it tastes good I don't think so no, <laughs> so they're the little they're just basically Look tiny that. clams no, they little, yeah. they just, yeah. oh, tiny little clams they just oh, clasp so on cute. yep yep that's some cute. of them have hooks some of them don't so they just hang on and develop and eat whatever he's breathing through they filter feed off his gills they're yeah they yeah they're feeding off the yeah but they're waiting yeah. to get somewhere and they're gonna yeah. drop so off these, yeah. the muscles are parasitic Yes, and, and they're, in their larval in stage. their larval state, and that's wow. what uh, clams are not, and oysters are not. Mussels are, and right. yeah, that is, I guess that's the distinction. Yeah. Unioid mussels are. So that's their egg sac, the, then. That's basically their their, um, their, 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 their brood pouch. Their brood pouch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that's the uh, inside of the mantle cavity. Hmm. That very is interesting. So crazy. Right. That's very interesting. That's, that's nature's kind of, crazy. That's kind of amazing. I get yeah. it. No, it's get totally it amazing. Yeah. yeah. So that yeah. that's kind of the thing that made you go, okay, hold on here. Wow. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a it's weird life cycle. Well, beginning of a life cycle. So it's, yeah. So that's the beginning of it. What what happens after that? Is after it, oh, so after a certain period of time, they will drop off, and when they get to like favorable environmental conditions, and start a new bed of mussels. So they'll, they'll just they'll float off of their gills and just like they lay just in. open, yeah, kind of collapse back down. They settle Unclasp. in and then they close they up and they just they sit and there and eat. They start burrow, doing their thing. Yeah. yeah, they, they put eat their for muscular years. foot out and yeah, yeah, for hundred, yeah, crazy. It's really so, crazy. And, and they, they get they get like I mean they most of them are like that big, right? Um, Some of them get the ones larger. here are about like 
about like that as an adult. Yeah, so, talking about. yeah, and they just some of them four can, inches. They, they can be the width of your palm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you can you can clasp it like washboard muscles, can, yeah. are they can get huge. I mean, they can get over ten inches. Uh, is that that's, a native that's, species that's here? Native. We oh, have them. Really, here. I've, I've never seen. I've never felt like that. that. They're one that it, back in the day when uh, mother of pearl was actually made from. Mm. Actual pearl, right? That's what that's where they were made from. Really? From oh, these oh, the ins- they put uh, these mother of pearl was the inside it's of the, the knacker. Of the so what it's makes the inside? So what makes uh what makes uh the only the only what makes the what makes the pearls from the ocean more more valuable than the freshwater pearls? The shape. They're the shape. They're, they're more not as round. round. Yeah. Yeah, but most pearls that you see at a freshwater oysters are not round they're that's, not round that's one that's like, like a disc or something that's but like what that's they like do. one in a hundred thousand and that's why they're so you know rare. a pearl is just like a reaction to yeah. something that goes inside it's, and it's, it's a, right? right it's so, a grain of sand that comes in and then spit washes over to a million so times. what they do at, at, at pearl farms is they for a long time part of the reason of the decline of freshwater mussels that they were not only for mother of pearl here but they were taking them and harvesting them cutting them into little chunks and inserting them into the saltwater species on the pearl farms, so they would build, they have to have some, it, it makes the pearl go faster if they just insert knacker into them, basically. Knacker. Yeah, the, the mother of pearl layer. So they oh, would so cut they, out. They a, give it like a, they give it like a, like a, boost, um, like like a, a primer. Boot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's steroids. actually a guy that makes jewelry. He'll insert different kinds of things and into them. Things and then, and then, yeah, they'll, they'll form around it and then he carves the pearl itself. So you can see the inside. It's crazy. Wow. I think it's in Japan. I can't remember yeah. his name, but that was pretty fascinating. <laughs> so, so they just, they just, they, they just sit in the sand and they just, just yeah. filter things out. Do they do, do they filter enough to actually have an effect in a positive way? Like what they, do they benefit the ecology in a way by filtering? Well, just due to their the fact that they've basically no, always they been there. Because yeah, they, they die, if they suck up anything. They've, they've always been there. That yes, they do. So, yeah, and, they do provide. A and farm, they do so. uh, as far as like an exchange from the you know water column down into the sediment. They provide a link for that. They kind of like earthworms. You know how they loosen the earth yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. allow yeah, things yeah, to grow. Absolutely, yeah. So you have something burrowing down into the stream bed, and you have an energy transfer from the water column. Down to the bottom, so you, they get more and more oxygen. They, well. they get yeah. Yeah. Oh, the sand, yeah. Yeah. sediment. Yeah, and then uh, well, and to think about like the invasive ones, like zebra mussels, right? I've zebra mussels so. aren't the same. Yeah, They're what, not unioids. Actually, they don't do all this. They 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 actually have planktonic larvae. Right. But look at the the Great Lakes, right? Like mm-hmm. now, there some of them are extremely clear. That's mm-hmm. because they put, there are so many of them. They're filtering literally all the nutrients out of the water. Uh-huh. Filtering all the sediment, all the yeah. I was right. uh, I was in all the minerals. Awesome. And I was in awesome nothing, last week. and that's all the food for all right. the uh, all the plankton. Yeah. So nothing else can grow. There was there's you know where the dam is where Lake Travis is, and then mm-hmm. there's like Austin, Lake Austin. I remember going out to my buddy's house, and it kind of looks at you can see you can see where the dam is and the river from near there. And there used to be a bunch of uh, lily pads and algae and stuff in that waterway, and they introduced yep. carp to it. Yeah. And then, and I yeah, thought whenever whenever he told me that yeah. I no it was it was recently because they just now cleared up because I remember Wait, it I remember they carp to something recently yeah yeah I remember it <laughs> well, being it being algae it, really remember it being green ago. and lily pads like five or six years yeah. ago but now it's completely clear. What they do now is they draw down the lake. <laughs> They draw down the like the series of Highland lakes, um, the lake lake Travis they do them and lake in like, like pieces. To yeah, and they 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 draw them down to kind of control the amount of hydrilla and everything. So that they draw them. they draw the they, carp down. From no, they they let all the water out. Oh, uh, okay. Basically, back into the old river channel. Okay, so they they don't do that anymore. They don't do the carp thing anymore, right? They uh, their lesson. now they have basically it doesn't always work, but usually they're sterile. Uh, um, if you expose a fish embryo to a certain temperature, I, I don't know. I've never done it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not my specialty, but temperature you control. You, so you're trying to figure out what's getting hap and not. So, so like, so out, halfway through their development, you put them in warmer water than they should be in. They won't be sexually viable. Oh, you kind of stunt them. Right. Yeah. So that's but, the idea. But uh, life. Uh, uh, life will uh, life finds a way. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the first time they did that was in like Lake Conroe or something, and they yeah. had a hydrilla problem. Hydrilla is also an invasive species. Well, you can't so fish you, in Lake Conroe anymore. So you take an invasive species and you put the the carp in to eat it, and then it just turned into a mud pit because they ate all the vegetation. <sighs> Yeah, they well, didn't Eddie, stop man, at the hydrilla. Get, they just kept uh, eating. There's many, 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 many examples 
of people thinking that they're going to introduce a species into an environment yeah. to have an effect. They've and, now introduced and just, weevils to eat uh, giant salvinia in... Um, just stop. Why stop? <laughs> why do you think why do you think why, why do you think cat hunting is a thing in Australia? We've been good since Australia. Yeah. 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 Cane toads, man. Snakes like it's, and mongoose. Um, it's the yeah. oldest trick in the book and yeah. no, it's wrong. Well, I mean, we talked about we said snakeheads earlier. Snakeheads is snakehead fish is such a incredibly invasive species in the US South. Yeah. It's like ridiculous. I've never seen you know, a Florida fish. and Virginia. Yeah, I think from Virginia down to Florida because that they're, part. They're they're like they're superior, they're we're, 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 yeah, we're, we're bringing they're in these mouth hyper breeders, aggressive yeah, too. So, so they oh, have God. a lot. Um, so their their juveniles have they're a better so, yeah brooders. brooders so oh. after yeah, they're they, hatched, they, they're, they were released yeah, by yeah. some mouth breathers. Yeah, no mouth <laughs> mouth they're breathers. They're mouth science, breathers. Yeah. They're they're but <laughs> dang mouth breathers. That's just that's just one that's just one of many ways that uh, people have the arrogant idea that they can they can control yeah. their environment. So yeah. no, we'll balance it. No, 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 you won't. Introducing, introducing an invasive balance. species to gain an effect is is probably worse than sort of manipulating your environment in a way like jetties and things like that. I would say. Well, it ties, but, it ties back. Mm, it ties back. It's, to, it's we have a synerg- We know in, from it, history that it doesn't it, work. It's the synergistic it? effect. Here. It is. It, Everything is connected. Yeah. And it all. It all. So if you. I wouldn't say one of those is is worse yeah. or better than the other. Okay. Um, I, I, I would definitely really, agree with that. Yeah. Too. yeah. Really, it, like it, whether it, contributing or or taking away. No, nah, I, I think just means it's. Whether qualifiable, altering your quantifiable. Yeah. is is yeah. worth it or not? Because it okay, I could see. Yeah. Well, like altering a waterway is that worse than introducing an invasive species? I sure, don't know. Yeah. But what we have going on are so many compounding issues. We have altered water waterways. We have invasive species. We have climate change. We have, you know, habitat loss. Is so. the big thicket in danger? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, like in, I think like, everything. And I, well, I, I I'm mean, going to sound like an part, alarmist. Part again, of it but, yeah. is south of the saltwater barrier. Right. I mean, it goes into Orange County. People don't realize that it, it's not just. Oh, um, yeah. The big thicket is huge. Yeah. huge. yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Seven, seven counties. Yeah. And it used to be bigger than so that. So we grew up in the big thicket then. Huh? Yeah, we grew up in, yeah. Inside we grew up in like. North of Silver. Peak. Peak, yeah. peak big thicket. Oh, yeah. But the part like yeah. where the where the boat goes, that mm-hmm. is the big thicket. Right, right. That's National Preserve. That's a national park right there. And that is absolutely in danger from are, saltwater intrusion. Mm-hmm. Are there any cons- and then a toll road that they want to put through. Are there any conservation efforts or societies around here to try to save the big thicket or, or to try to, to head off things like this? That yeah, we can, yeah. Well, that we what would share? you say that, that There's somebody a, could do to help? Share to encourage other people to help Clean Air and Water things. Organization is a... An organi- that, that actually, it's mostly they have like a biologists. Local yes, yeah. They are the... the, the Clean Air oh, and Water Organization. That's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah, it's from the, the. Do you remember the Rotting Gun Club? Y'all are younger than I am, but like that was an old. Rotting Gun Club? Rotting Gun. It was a. <laughs> a Rotting Club. Rot, rotting Gun. Rotten it was a hunt, gun. hunting and fishing mm-hmm. club, Southeast Texas sportsman kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then um, they developed, they branched off and kind of made the Clean Air and Water Group. And so it was kind of the same thing, it's like, thing else that like we were a, talking about like earlier. It's like trying to connect the, the, the right. gaming or not the game, the sportsman. To the, the conservation. That's, that's exactly what that was. Yeah. It was, and, and it's, so they're still doing it, but they're called clean air and water. They need to go back to the Rod and Gun Club. I think they get uh, more. Yeah. They get more membership. It does sound. It doesn't little, sound as yeah. sciencey. You know? No, there's you gotta, there's. You got to get them. You got to really. But I think in, there's like know? 15 of us. We no meet once a month. That. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, well, <laughs> there's some really where good do speakers. Do you meet at the log on? No. <laughs> we meet at uh, oh God, what is it? Brazos Cattle Company or whatever the like. <laughs> Uh, Brazos, we in the Brazos area. What no, are you talking about? The, the, the restaurant, that restaurant off of uh, we're in Nature's area. East Tex Freeway. I think that's uh, what it's called. It's a yeah, steakhouse. You're a long way. I mean, <laughs> we're in Nature's, <laughs> and then like? next to us is a Trinity, and then you're talking about Brazos. And now, I'm, right? I'm acting like I know what I'm doing. I'm going to caught it by, I, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. I know the waterway. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I just got out of the Brazos. Come yeah. on now. All right, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Jumped right yeah. into the Sabine. Well, I mean, I think we've, I think we've, uh, we've rounded everything off. We kind of touched on a lot of subjects. We'll probably, we'll probably, uh, Call this one. Call this one a go. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming, man. We've we've been looking forward to this for a while. I, yeah, had, me too. I had a really good time. Yeah, I did too. It's great. Did, too. Like, did you have a good time? Did you have fun? I had a very good time. Hopefully, yeah. somebody yeah. learned a little something about freshwater mussels. Maybe yeah. you know what? Actually, the, 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 hopefully, the, people the, the, the just learned how how impressive the place we live is. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a special place. It really is. It, it is a special place. It's a, it's it's very intriguing. You know, there's uh there's endangered species here. Yeah. And we might be the last generation to see it. 
Most likely. Agreed. Yeah. So, get, out, get out and enjoy it while you can. So yeah, y'all think about and that, And don't kids. leave trash. Y'all That's think right. about that, kids. Uh, we're going to play in the arms of an angel uh, as our, as our head <laughs> oh, out. No. Uh, <laughs> a little tune for the big ticket. You probably won't, your kids won't see it. I'm tuning out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Allison. Right. Uh, Thank we you. We had a great time. We'll see y'all next time. <laughs>